the earth is having a north pole and a south pole so when we measure from the north pole to the south pole the polar diameter which we call it as is 12714 km so whereas when we calculate the equatorial diameter which is from the west direction and in opposite to the east direction when we measure that the equatorial diameter is 12756 km so this shows that there is a difference of approximately 42 km so this makes the term called oblateness of earth so the meaning is that the earth is neither a perfect sphere nor a perfect ellipse so this is the oblateness so the earth is flattened at poles which means that the equatorial diameter is about 20 km more than the average polar diameter so this makes oblateness and the equatorial radius is always not a constant the radius of the equatorial plane would not be a constant because it does not vary more than 100 meter around equator so at different points of the earth earth sphere it differs it is not at all a perfect sphere so this raises to a condition called oblateness so due to this what will happen is that we'll see that those we called as effects so there are some regions on the earth where we have a higher gravitational attraction so that is referred as regions of mass concentration or mass cons in short regions of mass concentration or mass cons where higher gravitational attraction is present and uh, there are some non regular features of the earth which leads to non uniform gravitational field present throughout the earth so this is a resultant of the force of an orbiting satellite that varies with its position okay the position also will vary so this is the diagram for that now we'll see the geo satellite so when a geo satellite is in orbit and it is a weightless the smallest force on satellite will cause it to accelerate and then drift away from its nominal location and in addition to that there will be an additional force towards the nearest equatorial bulge either at the eastward direction or at the westward direction so when we place a geo satellite in this space which we call it as geo stationary satellite so we will be fixing it with uh, respect to latitude and longitude and altitude at some points in space so that points will be fixing our uh, satellite so due to the additional forces like attraction of the earth at uh, some places will be higher and at uh, some other places will be lesser due to mass con which will make the satellite to move either in eastward direction or in westward direction so this occurs near, nearly about uh, uh, the equatorial bulge in the earth so this is the effect of oblateness so i'll uh, give you an uh, roughly an idea about where are this uh, stable points being present stable in the sense the satellites will be positioned in space with fixed coordinates due to the positioning of satellite with respect to your non oblateness okay and if there is a uh, higher gravitational force 
the satellite whichever is being placed in the orbit would be unstable it will be attracted towards the earth very easily so that we call it as unstable points so due to the positioning of mass con and equatorial bulges which are due to just a moment i'll be back hello sir hello good afternoon sir oh yes sir a uh, class yes sir hi oh, yes, sir hi sir let's hi yes, sir hi oh, sir hi oh, swimming sir no issue sir no issue sir i'm mute panni irukken
will begin sample on south pole on the globe the polar diameter is measured about uh, 1714 kilometers and uh, the equatorial diameter is measured about 12756 kilometers so due to this the oblateness of earth takes place where it results in uh, two different points where we have a uh, higher gravitational force at some points due to that we get unstable condition of the geostationary orbits and uh, the in the remaining parts we get a stable points so where the geostationary orbits will not tend to move towards the earth surface so those are the two points which we called as stable point which can be seen at exactly 75 degree east and 252 degree east whereas the unstable points can be found out at uh, 162 degree east and uh, 348 degree east so these are the stable points and unstable points in space so the satellite at the unstable orbit location would be at the top of a gravity hill so when a small force comes into that a gravity slope will be formed so which results in gravity well and then due to that drift in the gravity slope it will come to a stable position so at this degrees so if a satellite is perturbed slightly from one of the stable points it will tend to drift back to the stable point without any thruster firings required and uh, if a satellite is perturbed slightly from one of the unstable points it will immediately begin to accelerate and it will move towards the nearest stable point and once it reaches the stable point it will oscillate in longitudinal position and further it stabilizes at that point itself okay so if there are satellites being placed near the stable point unstable points we can give some perturbed uh, disturbances which can be artificially created or it can be given naturally due to passing of uh, celestial bodies okay if that disturbance is given it will accelerate and the geostationary satellite will move to a stable point okay so this stable points are called graveyard geosynchronous orbit locations these stable points where we obtain the moment of the satellite from unstable to stable points due to satellites perturbations in orbits so this is a diagram inclination changes effects of sun and moon okay so sun is present you can see that we are having a sun around this and the earth is rotating in its own axis and uh, revolving around the earth the moon is rotating okay now we place a satellite okay for example we place it at an angle of 23 degree with respect to sun and uh, moon so 28 degree with respect to sun and moon so inclination 7.3 degree sun's equatorial plane and with the earth's equatorial plane it is 5 degree okay what what happens in this condition is that the plane of earth's orbit around the sun is inclined at 7.3 degree to equatorial plane of the sun the earth is tilted about 23 degree away from the normal to the elliptic the moon circles the earth with an inclination of around 5 degree equatorial to the plane of the earth so all these values are being predetermined by using kepler's law and due to the sun's equator elliptic the earth's equator and the moon's orbital plane around the earth 
are all different. A satellite in the orbit around the Earth will be subject to a variety out of plane forces, which will tend to try to change the inclination of satellites orbiting from its initial inclination. So the mass of the Sun is significantly larger than that of the Moon. as we all are familiar and uh, the moon is assumed to be considerably closer to the earth than the sun. So for this reason, the acceleration force induced by the moon on a geostationary satellite will be twice as large as that of sun. So the net effect of the acceleration forces induced by the moon and the sun on a geostationary satellite is to change the plane of orbit at an initial average rate of change of 0 0.85 degree per year. So every year it will change to 0 0.85 degree due to this acceleration forces. So this acceleration forces will in turn change the effects on a geostationary satellite. When both the sun and the moon are acting on the same side of satellite's orbit. Both the sun and the moon are acting on the same side of satellite's orbit. The rate of change of plane of geostationary satellite will be higher than average. When both the sun and moon are acting on the opposite side of the satellite orbit, the rate of change of plane of geostationary orbit will be lesser than the average. So the average is calculated as the values which are being obtained by the rate of change of plane of geostationary orbiting. So in order to increase the orbital manual lifetime of a satellite, with a given fuel load, Mission planners deliberately place a satellite planned for geostationary orbit into an initial orbit with an inclination. So, next topic is your orbit determination. Wait. Stop. Orbit determination requires that some sufficient measurements is to be done. to determine the six orbital elements. So there are six orbital elements which is to be determined such that the appropriate placing of satellites in space as well as better and efficient communication can be reliable. So the need of this calculation is to be done in order to have a minimal, sorry, have a nominal orbital location. So the control earth station used to measure the angular position of the satellites. And these earth stations that are used to measure the angular position of satellites are generally referred as TTC and M. So first T represents your telemetry, second T refers your tracking, third one command and M refers monitoring of the satellite network. So whenever we launch a satellite, the telemetry tracking command and monitoring system will be deployed at your uh, receiver on the earth station to monitor the progress of your satellites. So the major satellite networks maintain their own TTCM stations around the world. Smaller satellite systems generally contact for such TTCM functions from spacecraft manufacturer or from large satellite operators as it is uh, generally uneconomic to build around the TTCM and M stations with fewer than three satellites to control.
next is the orbital effects in communication systems performance so the first and basic is your doppler shift that you all are familiar The Doppler shift is that for a stationary observer, the frequency of moving a radio transmitter varies with the transmitter's velocity relative to its observer. So the signal falls either prior or post when you observe an object from a viewing point. So then we'll be finding uh, our true transmitter frequency. FT when the frequency of signal is at rest. FR is the frequency where FR is greater than FT, proof transmitter frequency, and this occurs when the transmitter is moving towards the receiver. The FR will be lower than FT when the transmitter is moving away from receiver. So moving towards the receiver, FR will be greater than FT, and when it is moving towards so moving away from receiver, it will be lower. So this is the equation for that. Fr minus Ft by Ft, which can be given as del F divided by Ft, which del F is your differential frequency difference, which is to be determined, okay, del F. So which can be given in terms of velocity also. Vt into, sorry, Vt divided by Vp. Vp is the phase velocity of light that we all are familiar. So Vt is the transmitter velocity which can be determined at your transmitter and which is propagating towards your receiver. So using that we can find del F. So del F will be Vt Ft divided by C phase velocity. right? So Ft by C or F by C is 1 by sorry, f by c is lambda so lambda is equal to f by c so substitute that so we get doppler shift del f <coughs> next topic is uh, range variations so generally when a satellite revolves around the earth, it undergoes some form of variation in its position during a cyclic daily variation. So this variation in position heads to a variation in the range between satellites and user terminals. So next uh, is an important of what is a satellite. Since we are not dealing with satellite communication, we should be familiar with what is a satellite. So satellite is, the image that I have put is an artificial satellite. Satellite is an artificial body placed in orbit around the earth to collect information for communication. We place our satellites, for example, we, we have placed Aribata as the first Indian satellite in space for conquering some of the informations around uh, India or collecting informations through any sensors, through image images, through GPS signals, through remote sensing, whatever it might be. So we send artificial bodies and place it in orbit from the earth surface for getting information about earth and giving it back to earth so that is an artificial satellite is so for earth we have a natural satellite which we call it as moon moon is a natural satellite of earth so whereas the satellites that we launch for getting information of earth and even in space is artificial satellites category so what does this satellite communication does Communications satellite is a radio relay station in orbit above the earth. It receives, amplifies, redirects analog and digital signals, which is carried out on a specific radio frequency.
Today, satellite communication plays a vital role in the global telecommunication system. So I have given you an image of how a satellite and the Earth are being present in space. It's a relevant photograph of that. You can see the blue, green, brownish part, which is this, is the Earth. This is blacks and dots, black with white dots which is being photographed is an example of the stars, remaining planets, galaxies and all. And a panoramic view of satellite with Earth. So this, this is your satellite. Satellite will have different segments in it. So that different segments in the satellite will discuss in the unit number two. The unit number two, we'll see that. So this is your satellite communication diagrammatic or pictorial representation is. So there are two major elements. You can see as in the diagram, we have uh, antennas in the left side, probably large sized MAC TVs, antenna systems or uh, CA TV antenna system or dish antennas which are being present in earth station which you called as ground segment and another element which is present in uh, space which is your satellite okay so that we call it as space segment so whatever is present for uh, transmitting receiving of informations at ground or at the earth station is called as ground segment and whoever sends the information to the ground station from space that is the satellite we call it as space segment so this is your block diagram of a satellite communication how it works we have a user you can see at the left side user is there he sends some information to the terrestrial system from the terrestrial system by using some modulation techniques AM, FM or whatever might be the modulation technique depending upon the format the terrestrial system will convert and it gives to earth station the earth station will transmit through a transmitting antenna to space in space it reaches the satellite which I have drawn you can see at the top so the frequency at which the signals are transmitted from earth station to satellite is called as uplink frequency from you can see that from the transmitter transmitting antenna to the satellite so that frequency is uplink frequency and from the satellite which are being placed around 36000 kilometers from the above from the earth surface from that surface, it is about 36,000 kilometers placed in space. From there, those signals reaches the receiving antenna. And uh, that frequency from where satellite gives back to the receiving antenna. The frequency used is downlink frequency. Always the uplink frequency and downlink frequency will be different. <clears throat> depending upon the band <coughs> depending upon the bands being used and uh, they come to the receiving antenna and at the receiver antenna you can see the direction it goes to the earth station and uh, similar to the transmitter we have a terrestrial in receiver and to the corresponding user so this is your generalized block diagram of your satellite communication so whatever happens in the earth is called as an earth segment Whatever happens within the satellite is your space segment. So the path of a satellite always follows a planet. The planet is our Earth. is defined as an orbit, as you had seen in the yesterday's class, orbits. And these orbits are classified into two broad categories. 
one is non geostationary orbit another one is geostationary orbit so we'll see this what is geostationary and stationary is as uh, somebody asked in yesterday's class what is geo right so first i'll uh, discuss about the non geo so non geo stationary orbits are that the satellites that have been placed for communication in low earth orbits are due to the technical limitations of launch vehicles in placing in satellites in higher orbits okay why do we go for this is that due to these three reasons okay polar orbit equatorial orbit and inclined orbit so in polar orbit the satellite moves from one pole to another pole with 90 degree inclination whereas in equatorial orbit the orbital plane lies <coughs> with an inclination of zero or very small whereas in inclined orbit all the orbits other than polar and equatorial orbit are called inclined orbits so when uh, the satellite move from one pole to another pole with 90 degree we call it as polar if it is equal to zero or very much smaller it is equatorial other than this we call it as inclined orbits so the advantages of placing of uh, satellites in non geostationary orbits or the low earth orbits is less booster power is required at the satellite reduced problem of echo in voice communication there is a less delay in transmission path it is highly suitable for providing service at higher latitude and it is a low cost to build and launch satellites at ngso non geostationary orbits disadvantages complex in transferring signal from one satellite to another means satellite to satellite communication is impossible and it is very much complex the ex life expectancy of these satellites are very less and we need to frequently replace all these satellites frequently means every 2 years or 3 years we need to replace this non geo stationary orbits or else it will not give the appropriate communication that we require next is the geostationary orbit so the geostationary orbit is only one orbit there is no any other orbits which are geostationary in nature which is equatorial plane the orbit lying in equatorial plane means the satellite orbiting at the same speed as the rotational speed of earth on its own axis the orbiting period of the so rotational speed of the earth will be equal to the orbiting period of satellite if these two are same then we call it as geostationary orbit advantages we can have a very smaller frequency shift or a doppler shift <coughs> we can get the range values nearly constant so simple ground station tracking can be done easily disadvantages are there will be a delay of 250 microseconds so can calculate that no polar coverage means the polar coordinates at north pole and south pole cannot be covered by using this geostationary orbits reason is obliqueness of earth and uh, we have large free space losses so next topic is your uh, look angle determination we have seen this look angle determination is that the azimuthal angle and the elevation angle earlier also the same is being discussed again same diagram nadir direction zenith direction calculating look angle <coughs> so
So any doubts till this, you can put in chat box. Then I'll proceed for the next topic, which is Eclipse. So since there are no queries in the chat box, we'll move on to the next topic called Eclipse. The solar eclipse. So a satellite is said to be in an eclipse when the earth and the earth prevents sunlight from reaching it. That is, when the satellite is in the shadow of the Earth, when the satellite is in the shadow of the Earth, there would be an uh, For a certain period or for a certain time, the satellite will be going to ellipse. The thing is that when the 
earth prevents sunlight from reaching it okay so a sun will be there i'll show in this diagram so you can see the region sun rays so here from the left side sun rays will be coming and if it falls on the earth okay satellite west of earth station satellite east of earth station and this earth will completely cover the satellite okay so in geostationary orbit the satellites are being rotating and so they are revolving in the orbit so when completely all these sun rays are being absorbed only by the earth making the satellite in efficient of power or insufficient of power then eclipse takes place so this region is called as eclipse region okay so this occurs this occurs during uh, equinoxes so what is the equinoxes is that <clears throat> so equinoxes are the times these are the times when the earth so when the sun earth and the satellite are all near in the same plane meaning that in between the sun and satellite the earth will come in between <clears throat> and making satellite in a shadow region of the earth so this we called as solar eclipse and this may last for about 23 days before equinox and at the end of equinox 23 days okay for every geostationary satellites sun rays earth and satellite so during an full eclipse a satellite receives no power okay if it doesn't requires power or if it doesn't gets power what it will do it cannot get a power for working so what will happen is that the satellite will not send signals to <coughs> the earth station during that period so it must operate only on batteries because communication is important so what the satellite will do is that it will uh, take battery from or it will take power from batteries okay. so the battery should be designed in such and procedure that having maximum depth of discharge for example the used battery types are uh, nickel hydrogen batteries which is having about 70 percent depth of discharge and recover fully once recharged so those type of batteries are used in satellites so ground controllers perform battery conditioning routes prior to eclipse operation so they send informations to that batteries for maintaining continuous <clears throat> monitoring so the the routines consist of deliberately discharging the batteries until they are close to their maximum depth of discharge and then fully recharging the batteries before eclipse season begins so after the eclipse then the satellite will be operating from solar power so the eclipse season is design challenge for spacecraft builders rapidity with which the satellite enters and exits the shadow can cause extreme changes in both power and heating effects over relative short periods so the eclipse periods are therefore monitored and carefully by ground controllers as this when most of the equipment failures are likely to occur okay. so next is the sun transit outage so during this equinox period not only the satellite passes through the earth shadow on the dark side of the earth but the orbit of the satellite will also pass directly in front of the sun so this makes the sun to be as a hot microwave source with a high temperature of about uh, 6000 kelvins to 10000 kelvins so therefore the earth station antenna cannot receive any signals from the satellite only it will receive some types of noises due to the temperature of sun so 
this is an example of that. In this scenario, sun is there, sun, satellite, and earth station present on the earth in a same equatorial plane. So what happens? Due to the excess of temperature that falls on the satellite will create more noises rather than creating good signals. So that noise is also received at your earth station. So this is what sun transit outages. So for the satellite system operators with more than one satellite at their disposal, traffic can be offloaded to satellites that are just out of. So the load will be, the load from the satellites to the earth station will be cut off. And such that we enter a sun outage. <clears throat> so next is the launch and the launch vehicles. So what is this launch and launch vehicles is that a satellite is to be placed in orbits. So how do we place? So the main criteria is that we have to see the orbit height, we have to check for orbit height and we have to see the velocity vector. So a satellite cannot be placed into the satellite orbit unless these two parameters are coupled together. One is velocity vector and another one is orbital height. If these two are done correctly, your satellite will be placed automatically in the desired orbit that the satellite designers do it. So the design is a geostationary satellite must be at a height of about 35,786.03 km from the earth surface. Meaning is that from the center of the earth, center means you all are familiar, where, from where do we get the center of the earth? 42,164.17 km radius from the center of the earth. So with that, in that orbital height, we should place our satellite for geostationary. And uh, we should have elliptically eccentricity to be a zero, elliptically of zero. <clears throat> and uh, velocity of approximately 3,074.7 meter per second or I can write approximately 3 kilometers per second. So the satellite should travel for every second approximately 3 kilometers tangential to the earth in the plane, in the plane of orbit which is your equatorial plane. So imagine when a satellite is being launched the minimum height should be around 36,000 kilometers approximately from the earth surface and from the center of the earth it should be 40 approximately 42,000 kilometers and the velocity should be that approximately 3 kilometer per second the satellite should travel so imagine that how much uh, pressure should be given to the rocket such that it takes this satellites into space against Keep in mind against gravitational force. Okay. So this I'm giving an uh, diagrammatic representation with some information. So at uh, what time what happens? Okay. In a, any earth launch, sorry, in any in any artificial satellite launch. The largest fraction of energy expended by rocket is used to accelerate the vehicle from rest. Accelerating the vehicle, vehicle in the sense launch vehicle from rest until it is about 32 km from the earth surface. Right from the earth surface to 32 km above towards the space there should be much acceleration to the 
launch vehicle. So in order to provide that, <coughs> mostly we use uh, efficient fuels. Okay, so this efficient fuels should work at different stages in different perspective view. Okay, so which we call as staging. So you can see the diagram at the bottom. I have a lift off, so, which is the rocket. So rocket lifts in elliptical path. So at around two point two second or two minutes zero seven seconds, first stage separation occurs. Okay, meaning that second stage ignition starts. So from there it moves on. And at uh, 5.34 seconds, payload fire jettison. This occurs. Then at uh, 5.41, second stage separation or the third stage ignition starts. Then at uh, 10 minutes, third stage separation starts. At uh, 25 minutes, fourth stage roll or alignment starts. So this is your satellite. You can see this point okay this is your satellite so this is your rocket so rocket which carries your satellites together is called as your launch vehicle so this launch vehicle when it reaches one one hour 27 minutes you can see that one hour 27 minutes it reaches gto and at a three point three hours, 59 minutes, 10 seconds, the completion of program turns. At uh, seven hours, 58 minutes, completion of the comp compensation turn occurs. Then at uh, seven hours, nine minutes, 20 seconds, fourth stage ignition starts. After that, spacecraft separates from the fourth stage which has been placed in geo orbits then after seven hours and ten minutes or so the satellite is handed over to the user whoever is using this satellite will use its access So here is a glimpse of that. Most launch vehicles have multiple stages. As each stage is completed, so that portion of the launcher is expanded until final stage that places the satellite into desired trajectory. Hence the term. You can call that term the term as ELV, expandable launch vehicle. Okay. So when the ro rocket is being launched, it moves towards the space at a desired path and at a desired orbit. Then uh, at stage by stage, it expands itself and it is launched and it is given to the user properly, which we call as expandable launch vehicle. Next is the uh, RLV, which is a reusable launch vehicle. So during this launch, there will be solid rock boosters, which are recovered and refurbished for future missions. And the shuttle vehicle itself will float back to the earth for refurbishment and reuse, which we call as reusable launch vehicle. The thing is that we place the uh, satellites in space and after some period of time after 10 years 15 years 20 years or depending upon the desired information the satellite will automatically come back to the earth's desired position okay so if it comes back to the earth surface and then again they refurbish it repair it, do maintenance, reuse it and they again launch it okay which we call as shuttle the name called space shuttle okay 
which is a part of the nasa's space transportation system okay so that type of launch vehicles we call it as reusable launch vehicle and i think most of you all are familiar with uh, the indian woman who went to space and during her return journey from space she was uh, accidentally uh, lost her life i think most of you all are familiar the name called kalpana chawla kalpana chawla right so she was traveling in a space shuttle so during her return journey the massacre occurred and uh, she lost her life okay so she is one of the crew members of that launch vehicle space shuttle okay so going to space and coming back and again sending it so that type of vehicles we call as relaunchable so reusable launch vehicles <coughs> so here is next is the points placing satellite in geostationary orbit which is a difficult task which our scientists has done it correctly so perigee point apogee point leo low earth orbitings geos synchronous orbiting so those are the points so how do we place so this is how do we place all the geostationary orbits are being determined so depending upon that from the earth surface they are being sent elliptically so until it reaches the path you can see that this is the path geostationary transfer to orbit with slow orbit rising okay you can see that it starts from here goes 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 